Well, good morning, everybody. It's Monday, and as usual, it's time for Rolling Bananas. As you know, last week, Peter was as sick as a robber's dog, but today <laughs> he is, in fact, back, back in top form. Peter, what's been happening while you've been on your sick bed? A lot's been happening when I've been on my sick bed. Um, I guess big thing at the moment, we're right in the middle of earnings season, and this is the critical week. This is tech week, so we have Google... Uh, Alphabet, obviously, as is uh, Microsoft, Amazon, all the big ones. And thoughts are that there's a big downturn in advertising. Snap last week, and if you saw Snap was down, 20, yeah, yeah. down 25% last week, already down 75, 77% this year before that, uh, claiming advertising Bad issues. Affair. So I think we're starting to see it trickling through to sort of the broader economy now. Adidas, uh Put out its second profit warning in three months, which is obviously a consumer. Adidas or Adidas? I, I prefer Adidas because I think that's the German pronunciation. Nice, short, sharp. Yeah, you know, it could be. Sturbenfuhrer. Fascinating story, the story of Adidas and Puma. Do you know that? Uh, enlighten me, please. Two brothers, both in the sports business, shoe business, ironically. Uh, one supported the Nazi party, one didn't. Oh, I see. Split off, called his other one Puma. <clears throat> I see. So um, I wear Adidas. Love them. Can't beat Adidas. Right. Anyway, there you go. Brain, it's got a bit of brain fog here, so still not forget yeah. which one was which there. But uh, knowing you, I can assume. It's, uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> so Twitter, obviously, other uh, company in the news. It's a tech company. Yes, it has advertising. That was down 9% pre-market on Friday. Elon Musk. Uh, looks like he has to buy Twitter. I think he's going to have to sell down um, some Tesla to do that. <laughs> he must be gutted. And he's also sent a memo out <laughs> about how many people he's going to have to lay off, which is basically most of Twitter. Most of them, yeah. Yeah, so I can imagine that morale there is not the, the highest. And uh, yeah, he's, he's ending up, as we were just talking about, he's ending up buying something for probably twice as much as he actually needed to yeah. pay. Um, he could have started his own. Twitter technology is not difficult. Yeah, it's not that complicated. And bring in, do it from day one so yeah. you haven't got the bots out there. I mean, that's what I'd have done. Start man. Elon, if you're listening, Mr. Trick, mate. Mm. What else? What else? Oh, crypto. So, you know, every now and again we find a little story like SPACs. We came up with a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> crypto. Guess how much money has, and I love the word when the Financial Times uses the word like evaporated. Has evaporated from crypto this year. This year, oh my god! I, I, it would have to be a trillion dollars. I would have thought two trillion dollars. Two trillion dollars. Two trillion dollars. That's nuts. It isn't is it? absolutely nuts. I think that might be contributing to the global economic problems. Actually, yeah. I really do, and I'm being genuine there. I really it's do. A lot of people have put obviously a lot of money in there, and it's just literally two trillion. Gone. Two trillion dollars evaporated since the spring. Not even this year. Um, and what's been happening alongside that is a lot of the founders, let's call them the evangelists, they've all been cleared out. They all want people now to run the companies who actually know how to run companies rather than just yeah. say this is the best thing. And you Prior to them it. going to prison. Yes. Probably. Largely, which a is, is where a hell of a lot of them are going to end up, yeah, I suspect. I, I think so, particularly when you look at some of the US um, sort of writs and things that are out there. Yeah, yeah. Talking of uh, writs, chess. Talk to mm. you about chess. Interesting. Young upstart who allegedly beat the uh, world champion Magnus. Um, he's suing for a hundred million dollars for defamation <clears throat> because he's been accused of cheating yes. by the Grand Masters. I mean, that in itself is interesting, but the way he was accused of cheating I found to be quite disturbing. Allegedly, and this is a thing about technology as much as anything else, the chess computers that you have on your phone now are so advanced that they can beat a grandmaster. Mm -hmm. Allegedly, he appeared with a sex toy secreted somewhere about his person and was receiving Morse code messages on it as it vibrated to tell him what move to make next. King to pawn two, buzz, 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 buzz. That yeah. is apparently how he uh, was cheating. <laughs> that is... Very weird. and um, It's weird and disturbing, but this kid has already admitted to cheating earlier on in his career to get up above people. Yeah. It's quite scary though, isn't it? Yeah, you've stumped me for $100 million. There. There's nothing you can say. When I read that, I just thought, the only other thing, <clears throat> I'm going to cover this now. The only other thing that disturbed me even more, 
Did you see the former chairman of the uh, Chinese Communist Party? Yeah. The, uh, I mean, handled out. That was, was that was weird. Apparently he felt ill. He felt, uh, well, if he didn't, um, he's going to feel ill, yeah. very, very ill, fairly shortly, I would imagine. It, it's a very strange thing. You look at what Xi is doing now, uh, and he's doing exactly what Vladimir did over the last sort of 15 years. And um, so he's putting himself in a position of effectively infinite power now with just mm. yes men around him. There you go again, Peter. You've gone against I've gone Xi. And made Whereas I'm enemy. completely couldn't <clears throat> say anything against you, Mr. Xi. I think you're doing a fantastic job of the economy. Peter, on the other hand, has his concerns. <laughs> Don't worry but about that. Once one. you get yourself into that sort of position, I'm sure to be in that sort of position is probably great. Or maybe not. Maybe you get a bit paranoid. I can't imagine. Sure. I think you must be paranoid. I'm yeah. sure you'd be paranoid all the time. Um, like the Saudis, I'm just about to um, now. Makes some more enemies, these very rich Saudis who have houses everywhere yeah. and they move from house to house. They don't want to be in one place for too long because they're literally scared. They've got so much money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got security details in every country. But but you get yourself into that position and you're running a country, then, you know, long story short, longer term, you're not going to do the right thing by the country. You're going to do the, no, right, you, the right thing by you and your mates around you. Yeah, and Xi's been an odd one for ages because he just keeps giving himself more and more titles. Hmm. And But... You know, I mean, I guess if he wins this time, if he wins, no, he's done. He he's won. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. he's the only person ever to be elected for three terms. Mm. Well, I think there was only one vote. Fifteen years. Him. I thought they always had at least three, <laughs> but the know. other two tend not to get yeah. many votes. But as they're numbered ballot papers, yeah. you know. <laughs> yes, but if you want to see an example of where you know a party behaving in its own self-interest can destroy economies and the country. Look no further than old Blighty. Yeah, old Liz. She did make a bit of a cock up there. Bit of a mess there. Bit of a mess going she, on. Not, I like the way she's had two leaving parties, though, at Chequers, this um, really huge country retreat reserved for the Prime Minister. She's had two leaving parties. After 44 days, mm. you don't have two leaving parties. Well, not unless they're taxpayer funded. Uh, no, apparently she has funded them herself. Okay. Yeah, she that was made very clear. But somehow I suspect she might have said... A little bit like, well, I'll pay for the nibbles from Marks and Spencer, but the rest of it's all covered, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, not a place for a BYO, is it? You're not going to bring your own to check us. No. Really. And I noticed Biden yesterday, he said um, he, he completely understands why people are worried about his health. He yeah. could die at any moment. I think what he was trying to say was, we could all die at any moment. Yes. <laughs> but unfortunately, it came out as, I could die at any it's moment. probably being misinterpreted. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. So results are... Uh, out, they don't seem spectacularly bad, but they no. don't seem spectacularly good either. I do notice now 30 odd percent <clears throat> retracement in the markets. Mm -hmm. A lot of people talking about it being a good time to get back into it. But my uh, particular uh, favorite, Michael Burry, of course, Cassandra on uh, Twitter says he still thinks he's got another 20 percent to go, uh, taking it down, you know, the classic 50 percent retracement. Yeah, the uh, markets, as you say, the earnings have been OK. And what's been interesting is the banks have said that consumers are holding up pretty well. Um, mm. But we're seeing, obviously, mortgage rate rises. We're seeing the price of goods go up. We know that people are shopping down into sort of lower Walmart categories or moving into Walmart or doing similar. So the pain is coming. There, yeah, definitely. But it's not there yet. So... You know, we'll see this week in terms of I'm sure that advertising will have dropped probably across the board. Um, and, you know, people say, you know, until, you know, wiser economists than us, until the increase in interest rates stops, you really aren't going to see the market turning. So, you know, it looks like there's another 0.75% yeah, nailed on for November. There's another meeting in December. Um, you know, we'll have to see. I mean, we are at a point where, you know, this is where the banks could mess it up right they could over egg it oh like they might have done 18 months ago with the quantitative easing easing now we're in this sort of quantitative timing phase they could flip us back uh, i think way. it's almost impossible to get it right though isn't it i yeah. mean they're talking about european central bank having to make yet another record increase to uh, i think it's wednesday they make that if they make that the uk putting maybe even a full percent on interest yeah, yeah. rates 
it's the sort of thing that takes time to trickle through because people yeah. don't see it immediately, right? You don't immediately sit there and say, oh, my dear Lord, the, it, it's gone up. My mortgage has gone up. It takes it a few months to really trickle through. But I think it could be an ugly Christmas. And I noticed that uh, if you go to your local shopping centre, already in the UK, there's a heck of a lot of places got their big sales underway yeah. because they're just not selling stuff in the run-up to Christmas. Yeah. So yeah. got to be a global phenomenon, though. I was uh, also reading yesterday that the US stores are really worried that this isn't going to be a big... Is it Black Thursday, I think they call it, isn't it? Black Friday. Black Friday. Yeah. It isn't going to be a black, big Black Friday. It's just going to be, mm, thanks very much, but I don't need another widescreen TV. Yeah, and I think that will be the the key sort of early indicator when it because Thanksgiving, that Thanksgiving shopping period tends to be bigger in the US than the uh, Christmas period, which is bigger. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, that Black Friday. So we shall see. But trading's been good, as we know. Um, yeah, definitely. Markets up and down uh, again. We had a crazy week the week before. And then even last week on Friday, we had a 2.5% increase after mm. tracking down for most of the week. So I think, you know, people are undecided. The markets are undecided. Um, are we going to go lower? Yeah, probably. Will we get some rallies? Yes, of course we will in that. But what it means is we're getting some nice volatility. There's trades to be made up on the uh, you know the long side and on the short side when shares are dropping. So, yeah, I mean the one place I wouldn't want to be is a bond investor right now. No, I think that's really a, quite a disturbing phenomena actually. That for the first time, bonds are being utterly hammered. Yeah. And of course, um, in the US and the UK, a lot of funds are forced to put a whole bunch of their money in bonds. Yep. So, you know, if you're coming up for retirement in six months, 12 months, it's probably not a great place to be. If you've got three or four years, who knows, maybe your fund will recover. But you don't want to be retiring in the next few months if you haven't no. locked in some sort of annuity. No. And yeah, bonds are a big focus, as you say, on bonds. And we were downgraded last week, weren't we, to negative by Moody's? Uh, yeah, the UK was, yeah. yeah. Um, Germany was downgraded from positive to neutral, yeah. France positive to neutral. So I think everywhere's being everywhere's being downgraded because the whole shooting match is in is in deep trouble. Yeah. And still the, the thing as I said the last time we spoke, no one talks about Ukraine anymore. It's just completely it's like, oh, the economy's in trouble, forget about Ukraine. Um what is happening there? I well, mean, well, there is stuff going on. There's been these attacks on um, the uh, power network, mm. um, and they're ordering these Himish, I'm not sure what they're called, but they're basically mobile rocket launchers which can take down cruise missiles or right. those kind of things, <clears throat> made by Boeing or one of the big US uh, defense businesses. And... Uh, I didn't realise how long these things took to make. Do you know how many they're making this year? No. It's like 15. Fifth, so they can take down 15 cruise missiles? No, no, there's multiple missiles on these launchers. But the actual launcher thing itself, oh, they okay. can make 15 a year. Now they're going to try wow. and double that. I suppose you're always hoping that no one's <laughs> actually going to launch many well, at the, you. The problem but... is it's that everyone else needs them as well. Germany wants some, yeah. Poland wants some. Wow. They, some of them have already given theirs to um, Ukraine. So they're really desperate for them. They're now, really desperate for them. But Ukraine yeah. need more. Um, God, if only they'd have made those instead of 737-800 series. They could probably have... Max. Max. Yeah. Rather than the Max jets, they could have probably yeah. saved uh, saved lives instead of... Uh, yeah. Had the other disaster, but... Uh, so, yes, it's, 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 it's still ongoing there. I mean, it's just becoming very entrenched. You feel like there's probably, you know, a long entrenched war there or there's some sort of yeah, political definitely. solution that no one will be happy with. And also last week, did you notice <clears throat> that the Shetland Islands was mysteriously yes. cut off yes. from all internet, everything, in a sort of a spurious incident? And they've not... They didn't go into any details. They've not said it was cut underwater. Or... They just said that the undersea cable was severed. Yeah. And, and then five days later, they fixed it. Well, I'm not an oceanographer. But I do have a bit of an engineering background. And these cables are very deep, some of them. Yeah, you'd have thought so. You yeah. would have thought fixing that is not that simple. Though it's near Scarpa Flow, isn't it? Yeah, so, so, I guess so. So it's probably only a few hundred feet, but you still got to get something down there get to do down it. Down yeah. There. I, I don't know whether that was, I don't, who knows if that was um, the Russians or or not, but it's certainly a really odd thing to happen. I just thought coming after the, the gas pipeline was yeah 
clearly blown up by somebody um, for some reason. Well, crofters and sheep farmers are a clear and present threat to the Russian regime, so I can imagine they'd be top of their hit list. Yeah, I, I, I didn't really, un- I didn't really understand. It's, it's, it is possible. It did just sever itself, I suppose. Yeah, I guess so. Something could drag like a trawl in there. Trawl in there, or, or anchor, s- yeah. I don't know, something like that. But it just struck me as being a bit, bit of uh, yeah, it was a bit weird, bit of an odd one. So, what have we got to look out for this week? Who are the big reporters and the tech companies? I know that IBM is saying they've, well, they, IBM did very well. They had a spectacularly good quarter. I'm expecting that to continue because they're big in consulting. Um, Oracle is one to watch, I think, if you're a follower of uh, products. Oracle is a fantastic company. Been around for a long, long time. Yeah, long time. Um, Still run by the same guy. Run it? by Larry Ellison, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who uh, super smart guy, super good at marketing, really knows his stuff, heavily into ocean racing, mm-hmm, um, yeah. ocean going yachts, etc. And I think he's like 74 years old now, maybe a bit older than that. Wow. The company was thought to be really heavily on the wane, but he's just spun that around, produced this thing called the Oracle Cloud, and he's got such big cash reserves that he can actually um, he can actually support it. And he, mm-hmm. he's stated a couple of weeks ago, stand by for some stellar announcement as, as the okay. people that are going onto the Oracle Cloud. Because one of the big trends in computing, surprise, surprise, people are now terrified of the costs of cloud computing yeah. because they get out of control very easily. So cloud computing is where... You take all the the servers from your data centers and you put them into the cloud, which is owned by Microsoft or Google or Amazon or Oracle. Um, that's what we used to call a mainframe years ago, mainframe. where you rented yeah. bits of space on somebody else. And guess what? Do you know why those people build those things? Because you can make money out of it. Yeah, it is profit. Yeah. Turns out <laughs> none of them are charities. Yeah. Like Literally that. none of them. Yeah. It's almost as though it'd be cheaper to do it yourself. Yeah. And in fact, when you do the numbers, it probably is most looks like it is yeah. cheaper to do it yourself. So um fads and trends, they come and go, don't they? I've always yeah. said it to anybody that's worked in tech, you don't work in the tech industry, you work in the fashion industry. Yeah. And if skirts are long, everybody says they need to go up. If they're up, they need to come down. And yeah. anywhere in between, yeah. as long as there's movement, people are buying. But if, if everybody says, oh, yeah, this will do, we'll sit here for a while, it doesn't happen. No, it doesn't happen. So who have got, we got to look forward to then? Yeah, so the, the aforementioned, basically, the Alphabets, the Googles, the Amazons, uh, the Microsoft. So when you look at sort of Google, Google is much more heavily influenced by advertising. So yeah, if definitely. advertising is bad, then they'll be more impacted. Microsoft is more, um, you know, B2B, more small B2B. A lot of their money comes from. Um, so... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, the other clouds on the horizon, if we needed any more clouds, which we don't, are that the yen is down 45% in the year. And yeah, they are not doing any quantitative tightening in their country. And so they're getting hammered by the gilt markets and the bond traders as well. Um, so, yeah, cash is an interesting one. Um, there's basically been no net inflows of cash from consumers into UK funds in Q3. Oh, well, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't surprise me. Everyone's holding it. That doesn't surprise me. Everybody's yeah. got to be hanging on to cash now. Yeah, yeah. Thing is, it's, it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy, right? When the press is so negative and everything, unless people are stupid, they don't immediately say, "Well, I'll think longer term." Yeah. But ironically, now is a good time to be putting your money in because by the time the press turns around and says the market is booming, you will have missed that 40%, 50% jump because there was always um, in the markets always what they called the Daily Mail syndrome, which is if the Daily Mail, which are, uh, like a middle, middle ranking newspaper, I guess, of sorts in the UK, if the Daily Mail told you to invest in property, you knew it was time to get rid of your property. If they told you it was time to get rid of your property, it was time to buy because they're absolutely diametrically at the wrong end of the spectrum when it comes to getting things right. Yeah. So if they're telling you, get rid of your stocks, get rid of your shares, they've had it, it's probably a really good time to buy. And I noticed uh, in the Daily Mail that they're hammering the idea of investing, investing, investing. So they've got rid of buy to let, they've got rid of investing. And ironically, even after they've se- said get rid of buy to let, rents have gone up to historic highs. Yeah. So 
It's like everything like we always say. If you want to be an investor, the difference between an investor and a trader, if you want to invest, you better take a long-term view yeah, of things. Look five to ten years at least. You want to yeah, be a yeah. trader, you need to look five to ten minutes yeah. maximum. You don't yeah. want to worry about it. So, And the other uh, story that struck me of the week was, you know, war is great for business. It's always been sort of said, war is great for business. There's a country uh, that you visited a few times that was on its knees, a place in the Middle East with a lot of sand, mm. where they couldn't sell anything. It is now booming. Saudi. Dubai. Oh, Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I saw, I don't, I don't know if you saw the house prices in Dubai. Top end house prices. This was the story I was reading. 70%, about. including the, I believe I'm right in saying, the uh, most expensive apartment ever, or actually villa ever, $164 million yeah. sold to an Indian gentleman. Yep. But where's most of it coming from? Most of the money. Yeah. Oh. My Russia. Russia. Of course, yeah. Why yeah, not? There's troves of uh, people with a lot of money who've left or leaving Russia. Well, why would getting you stay? to Dubai. And all of those properties around the... I can't even, the Palm. The Palm and stuff that were yeah. now going for stupid amounts of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah if, you, if you got to Dubai and you had some spare cash and you, you could have lucked out there big time. But yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know about... Dubai is a strange place. It's a really strange place. Because its property market is up and down. Like, yeah. yeah, it's also phenomenally expensive to live there. I can imagine. I mean, it's like whew, crazy expensive. If you want to, there's a lot of people who try and go there and be digital nomads. It's almost impossible to do it because the cost of living is so great. Right. And when you rent somewhere, you don't rent by the month. They give you a monthly number, but it's for 12 months and you have to pay all 12 months up front in one big lump sum. Okay. So people end up being lent a lot of money by their companies to work there then if they lose their job they get 14 days to find another job or leave the country and if you get told to leave the country guess what you don't get back from your property yeah you don't get that money you don't get anything back no No. so um (laughs) you just lose your money there you go (laughs) so there you go interesting episode this week you've gone from um chess to (laughs) to buy the chess one still worries me me, yeah exactly he says one of those things you'll never (laughs) forget um via elon musk who had a somewhat shrinking fortune last week yes yeah i didn't mention that 110 uh billion dollars was wiped off his 110 billion dollars and he's still the world's still the world's wealthiest man world's wealthiest man and also what other is he the world's wealthiest of um He's also the world's wealthiest actor. And now, here's an interesting fact. He's appeared in seven feature move, feature feature length movies. Even though they're bit parts, if you have more appear in more than five, you are classed as an actor. Okay. So he is also the world's wealthiest actor. Oh, I see. And on that little factoid <laughs> of Elonism, oh, that's it from me. And it's from me as well. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye.